you're probably already aware that that's player one and that's player two, and then you're gonna go on to player three and player four. What you might not know is what five, six, seven, and eight look like. So here we have it here. That's number one, two, three, four, and now we have five, six, seven, and eight. So for example, if I was to look at this pro controller here, you can now see that that one there is the same as that. So that's gonna be player six. And this blue Joy-Con here is the same as the last one here, which is gonna be player eight. To get the LAN play option on Mario Kart 8, all we have to do is press and hold the left and the right button, and then at the same time, we just need to click in on the left analog stick, and you will see it changes to LAN play. Click in again, and it will change to wireless play. So keep them all held at the same time. Now, there is this weird screen that you can get on the Nintendo Switch, and as of when this video is made, nobody's quite sure what it means, but hopefully some bright spark will work it out because it must be there for a reason. Now, my Nintendo Switch is fully up to date. I believe if you do this you're, and you're connected to the internet at the same time, it will automatically put you to the latest update. So if you don't want the latest update, don't mess around with this. But for me, I'm on the latest update anyway, so it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna power down the Nintendo Switch to begin with. So we're just gonna hold down the power button and we're gonna fully shut it down. Power options, power off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down the minus on the volume and then hold down the power, take our finger off the minus, onto the plus, then take our finger off the power, but keep holding the plus until Nintendo comes up. And then you will see it brings up this strange screen. So it's gonna be quite hard to do. I might not get it the first time, so this might be edited. Right, so I'm on the minus now, just a minus, and I'm gonna put my finger onto the power. I'm coming off the minus, onto the plus, and now off the power. And now when Nintendo comes up, I'm taking my finger off the plus. And now you can see it's gone a bit weird like that. Normally it should just boot up now, but it's brought up this screen here and it will keep wearing away like that, and then I can't do anything, and then it will just load up afterwards. Now at the moment, nothing's connecting up, the Joy-Cons are not working, that's the same on both of them, and it doesn't matter what buttons I press, nothing's happening. I presume it's so you can connect something into the USB-C to do something, but nobody quite knows at the moment. And now it will just boot up as normal. By using various different adapters, we can connect many different controllers to the Nintendo Switch. If you're wondering what YouTube is going to look like on your Nintendo Switch, again, it hasn't been released, but this will give you an idea of what it's going to be like. So, let's press play. You can fast forward. These are the victims. Know that we'll do it. No matter what we're going...
and of course we can put it in dock mode so you can watch it on the TV as well. And if you want to take it out of dock mode straight away, it will come back onto the Nintendo Switch. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. Finding lost controllers is really easy on the Nintendo Switch. So let's turn off this Joy-Con, pretend it's hidden, and also turn off the Pro Controller. Now, as long as they've got battery life on them, you will be able to find them because it will connect to it via Bluetooth. So if you're in Bluetooth range, you can find your controllers. If you do this and it doesn't work, keep doing it while walking around your house or apartment. And then once it gets into Bluetooth range, it will recognize it and it will start making the noise. So if we go to the controllers icon, search for controllers, and then you need to find the one that's missing. So here we've got the left gray Joy-Con. And now every time I press it, it will make a noise. And now the Pro Controller is still off at the moment. Now, when I press this button here, you will see it will turn it on. There you go. If you find that your Nintendo Switch suffers from slow Wi-Fi speeds, then try the 5 GHz network if you have that option. So a lot of routers or routers nowadays will output 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz for their Wi-Fi, but by default you might have just connected to 2.4 GHz. Try the 5 GHz and you might be surprised, it might well increase your speeds. So I'm just going to show you the difference between the two. This is a TP-Link one I'm going to be connecting to, the middle one here is just a 2.4 GHz one, and the top and the bottom one are the 5 GHz one. At the moment the second 5 GHz one for some reason seems to have a better signal than the first one, so I'm going to connect to the middle one on the 2.4, do a speed test, and then I'm going to connect to the top one on the 5 GHz and do a speed test and then compare the results. Right, I've just got to cover my IP address with the pen here, but you can see here TP-Link, and that is just a 2.4 one, and if you have a look, I've got 32.8 megabits per second download and 3.1 megabits per second upload. Now I'm going to go to the 5 gigahertz network and do the same speed test. Okay, so if you have a look at the top there, it says 5G for the 5 gigahertz network, and it's the second channel on that one. And look at the increase, it's gone to 49.6 megabits per second download and 4.7 megabits per second upload. So on the Nintendo Switch, it can vary quite a bit. I could test it now, and it might go down to 40, then it might go up to 55. Do quite a few tests, but take the average of maybe five tests on the 2.4 gigahertz network, and then five tests on the 5 gigahertz network, and then hopefully you will find that on the 5 gigahertz one, it does seem to be better. Obviously it can vary house to house and the distance you are from your router or router. You can get the battery to show the percentage it has left by changing it into system settings or if you just want to see it temporarily you can just tap the battery icon or you can hit the ZL and ZR together. We can use our Joy-Con, like a Wiimote, to select things around the screen. So if you can see there, this is all happening in real time, and it is actually pretty accurate. So if you remember years ago, you had your Wiimote from your Nintendo Wii, and you used to have your sensor bar at the top or the bottom of the TV, and then you would be able to select things on TV by pointing this at the sensor bar, and then you would pick the things out on the TV, and it was actually pretty accurate. Well, now we can do it on the Nintendo Switch, but we don't need the sensor bar. And the reason is, is because it's just using the motion sensing technologies in here to do the same thing. So for example, it wants us to point in the middle of the screen and press the plus button, and now it knows that's the fixed point, and now it knows that when we move away from that point, it knows how much to move. Now, we don't have to point at the screen. I can point over here if I want, and it's exactly the same thing, yeah? It's just taking that middle point as the fixed point, and then it's just gonna move from there. But it does feel nicer when you point it at the screen. Now, you can't do this on all games. At the moment, as far as I know, it's only implemented on World of Goo, which is this one here. So for example, now I can go down to OK. 
but it does show you that when they bring out the backwards compatibility and maybe if they start bringing out Wii games, it will be possible to use your Joy-Con in the same manner as a Wiimote.